All right, we're going to do it live. Oh, What's up, Bitcoin Twitter? What's up, the YouTube channel? Uh, we're going to take just a second and let you guys come online. I'm here with our creative director, Brecky Von Bitcoin, and our support guru and otherwise just all around uh, guy who pitches in on just about everything, Reed Womack. What's up, guys? Hey, hey. Good to be here. Swan Signal Live. So we are going to hang out here today and chat about a few things in the recent news. And we want to answer your questions about Swan. And, you know, if, and we'll also just kind of give a general update about what's going on at Swan. So first thing we're going to talk about are, are, is our uh, Stefan Levera podcast ads. And uh, we've been having a lot of fun, Brecky and, and I and, and the team, uh, of making these ads and i think it's awesome because it's you know something different in the space you know usually there's kind of the same old ad read over and over again uh but we are bringing something a little fresh um and i think it's a lot of fun so yeah brecky talk to us a little bit about the ads we've done and uh, i think we're going to roll a few of them here sure thing um first of all i think we're having a little too much fun we might need to dial it back just a little bit um <laughs> But, uh, you know, we've got a lot of talent here at, uh, here at Swan. And so the whole idea is uh, we want to use that talent and entertain people. And I'm a big believer myself in, uh, in entertainment. You know, who needs a dry podcast ad when you can, uh, you know, you can uh, do something fun. So uh, I, I, I could talk all day, but I think the best thing to do is we just, uh, we, we should run one. Which, uh, which one should we run first? Let's just go in, uh, in chronological order. Reverse. So, like, let's go with the oldest one first. I think that's that we have uploaded is uh, JFK. I think. I think that's JFK. All right. Yeah, All right. You're right. So this is Brecky doing the voice here uh, on JFK, and uh, it's the to the moon speech, which of course is appropriate in Bitcoin land. All right, exactly. let's roll it. Uh, real quick, also, he's asleep, but a quick thank you to Stefan for bearing with us and allowing us to do these out of the box ads. We would not be able to do that without him. So. And now uh, there's Thanks, no <laughs> Anyway, here we go. I think. Is it working? To the moment. Distinguished listeners, ladies and gentlemen, and our host, Stefan Levera, thank you for having me here today. I am particularly delighted to be here on this occasion. We meet on a podcast noted for Bitcoin knowledge, praxeology, and expertise in Austrian economics. And we stand in need of all three. But we meet in an hour of change and challenge, in a decade of hope and fear, in an age of both knowledge and ignorance. The greater our Bitcoin knowledge increases, the greater our ignorance unfolds. Despite the striking fact that almost all of the economists in this world are misguided Keynesians, despite the fact that the monetary premiums of assets are skyrocketing while the Federal Reserve continues its criminal mismanagement of the economy unabated, despite that, Bitcoin will go to the moon. Bitcoin will go to the moon. Bitcoin will go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because it is easy money, but because it is hard. Because the goal of sound money will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. To our listeners, if you'd like to join us on the moon, visit swanbitcoin.com slash Rivera and start auto stacking Bitcoin today. <laughs> <laughs> my, favorite so good, line, man. my favorite line is bitcoin will go to the moon not because it's easy money but because it is hard so it's too good. perfect it's, it's too perfect it's not hard hard read it it's hard hard there's no r in there i think it's h-a-h-d i think that's how it's spelled actually h-a-h-d it sounds right <laughs> uh <laughs> Oh, I'm Great job up. finding the video to go along with that too. Like I almost yeah. wish, almost wish that Stefan Levera's podcast, you know, could play that that video. Yeah. <laughs> and one, one day when there's a uh, you know a Bitcoin uh, television network or something, uh, we'll be able to do that. Jay Higgins in YouTube wants to know when Peter Schiff deepfake Swan ad. Uh, we, we didn't deep fake, but we do have a Peter Schiff ad. So I think that we should probably roll that one now. This this aired on the most recent 
uh, Swan, or sorry, Stefan Levera podcast with Peter Schiff. So of course we had to do something to celebrate uh, that particular conversation. So here's what Recky cooked up. And away we go. Please hold my golden chalice. I would like to hear what Peter Schiff has to say about Bitcoin. I have a lot of sympathy with uh, the Bitcoin bugs, you know, and their you know, skepticism or their concerns about our fiat monetary system and the problems that it has. But if people could invent something better than gold, they might have already done it. Bitcoins really replicate all of the properties of gold, even improving on some of them. The fact that it's easier to use than gold gives it intrinsic value. Bitcoins don't have any intrinsic value whatsoever. I will concede that the price of Bitcoin has gone way up. And what Bitcoin did very successfully is it managed to replicate a lot of those properties that gold had. Unlike gold, you can instantaneously, you can send your Bitcoin over the internet. You can't do that with gold. Now, I wish you, know, I, I wish you could have perva- persuaded me to buy Bitcoin a few years ago. Do I wish I bought it a long time ago? Yeah. There's a realistic probability that Bitcoin will make a new high. You know, Bitcoin has all of the characteristics of a bubble. In fact, I, I am sure yes, that it is Peter. a bubble. In fact, it's probably the biggest bubble I've ever seen. It's a massive speculative bubble, and you're going to be left holding the bag. There's no value in the Bitcoin. You can't use it as money. It's too slow. It's too expensive and too volatile. I think this thing is going to come crashing down. Please enjoy this conversation conversation between Stefan Levera and Peter Schiff. If you still want to buy some Bitcoin even after listening to Peter predict his demise, visit swanbitcoin.com slash Levera. <laughs> CJ Higgins, we didn't even need to do a deep fake. I mean, it's all there. Just just got to go through the archives. <laughs> In fairness, I, th- I took a little bit of creative license. You know, I probably made Peter look a little worse than he usually does, but you know, he does a pretty good job of that on his own. So it's all right. <laughs> but what do we, what do we think though? And is, is Peter right? Is, uh, you know, is there any value in, in the Bitcoins? <laughs> well, there's no intrinsic value in the Bitcoins in terms of being able to make cufflinks out of them. Uh, but you know, in, in my like estimation, the word intrinsic means like native value, right? Like na- value native to the, uh, the, you know, money that we're talking about. And, you know, Bitcoin to me has intrinsic value as money itself. Like it is the, it is pure money. It is uh, the first asset in human history that is 100% pure money, which is pretty awesome. I love how, was it Raul who, who says this, that it's like the most pristine asset he's ever come across? That pristine, fired, that's a good word. Fired up. Yeah, yeah for me. For me, the whole idea of intrinsic value doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> nothing, nothing at all has intrinsic value, and we should much, care much more about why things have subjective value. And so the, the, exactly. the reasons people give for why they project value onto things. So I got to give a quick shout out to Jay in the chat. He said he saw a YouTube video that literally had anti-Bitcoin Schiff arguing with pro-Bitcoin Peter Schiff, and I need to find <laughs> that video. Jay, if you can send, send the link to the Swan account if you have it, otherwise I'll I'll find it. But man, that that sounds great. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised actually, Brecky, with your your beautifully edited clips. There were uh, a number of very pro Bitcoin statements that he made, and I was under the impression in, in yeah. listening to him, um, in the past that he only ever said negative things about it. He's actually come out and said some, some pretty positive things. Well, what's funny? Breaking up a little bit there, Reed. Breaking up there. Um, yeah. Those those clips are a little old, aren't they, Brecky? Like the stuff where he's like, um, you know, that Bitcoin has all the properties of gold and even improves upon them, or most of the properties of gold, I think he says, and even improves upon them in some areas. Like it's transferable around the world very easily. That was from the early days, and he's since doubled down on his anti-Bitcoin rhetoric. But it, I was surprised too because when we first uh, when we had the idea for this video, we were thinking for this uh, ad, we were think, we were all saying, "Yeah, we'll just, just find all that Peter Schiff says about Bitcoin that are terrible, put them together, and, you know, let him, you know, uh, dig his own hole." You know, um, but then I surprised I found some of this pro stuff, and I was like, you know, probably be more powerful if you juxtapose the two. Um, and lo and behold, there 
I love awkward silences. <laughs> I enjoy. It. I know. I, I love awkward silences too myself. Uh, I just kind of revel in them and wait and see who talks first. <laughs> uh, all right, we have we've got one more uh, of the ads to run, and this was to celebrate the appearance of Raul Pal on Stefan's podcast, and. So of course we had to do uh, the running of the bull, uh, which is I think maybe one of the best like video memes out there for uh, Bitcoin, and you'll probably know it. Uh, Goldstein, Bitstein, uh, you know, really I think is sort of the the guy who shepherded this particular video to uh, the Bitcoin consciousness. <laughs> uh, so, Sorry, everybody. I have to uh, throw the swan up there for a little bit. You, swan wants a kiss, Brick. The swan wants a kiss. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. Uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we did the running of the bull meme uh, over like uh, Raul's like, incredibly bullish tweets that he's been putting out over the past few weeks. So, let's run it. Here we go. It's the running of. The Raul. Sorry about that, folks. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties. The bull doesn't want to run, but we're going to make the bull run. So give us one second. This is this is a metaphor. Bueller, said Bueller. With the bull. I think it's run. We might be getting audio. Bitcoin yeah, is likely set to be the best performing major asset in the world by a big margin. And so the bull began. It's run. It's run. My conviction levels in Bitcoin rise every day. Every day! Ready irresponsibly long. As the that. bull begins, it's run. I am now thinking it may not even be worth owning any other asset as a long-term allocation, said Raoul when the bull began its run. Visit swanbitcoin.com when the bull had begun its run. <laughs> Yeah, that was one that I got to voice, which was fun. Uh, I didn't even give I didn't even give Bricky a chance to do that one because I knew it would be better than mine, and I really wanted to get in one of these. <laughs> so there, there was the running of the Raoul Bull. So these have been a lot of fun to do. Uh, you know, it's I think we've done a couple others that are back in the archives. Um, the John Maynard Keynes ads. There were a couple of those. I think those are the only other two that we've done. Uh, so, Brecky, why don't you give us some John Maynard Keynes, since I didn't upload those to Restream to, to be broadcast. Some John Maynard. You put me on the spot here. Lord John Maynard Keynes here, here to tell you all about Swan Bitcoin. I talk like this because I'm a prat, and I <laughs> like to preach all the time. I'm better with a better with a in front of me. That was pretty damn good, man. I, I give you I give you nine out of ten. I'll take it. Uh, yeah, so I don't. You guys in the YouTube channel, we've got several people in there now. Uh, let us know what uh, if you have any ideas for Lavera ads. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun with them, so you know, tweet at us, uh, put them in there now, uh, whatever. But just let us know. You can DM us too if you want. Um, okay, so Austin has a question for us. Um, he says, "What's up, Swan Force?" How many whole coiners do you think there will be 
in 2030 or by 2030? That's a nice. good question. If, if you folks like that, we have this cool feature where we can show the questions. So this is cool. Your streams, please use proper grammar. Uh, speak uh, well. I don't know. Do, say whatever you want. Help me know. Whole coiners, not no coiners. Whole coiners. It's a good question. Well, we're, aiming, we're aiming for 10 million, aren't we? Well, 10 million new Bitcoiners for sure in the United States. That's our goal here at Swan. Um, ah, whole, whole coiners, sorry. Whole yeah, coiners. Whole. So I wonder how many whole coiners we have now. That's that's one question to answer. Uh, and I don't remember off the top of my head the guesstimation that's out there for whole coiners. Um, there, there is some good math out there, and I know Corey used it for his article about 10 million Bitcoiners, the intransigent minority. Um, it's on the Swan Signal blog swanbitcoin.com slash signal. Um, and I think he looked for a, like addresses that were holding over $100 worth of Bitcoin and that we were at like 100,000 or something in the United States. We needed to 100 exit, 10 exit, 10,000, 100,000. So we needed to, there's a lot of growth to do there to get to 10 million. Um, so yeah, I mean, let me guess. Whole coiners are going to be hard. It's going to be hard to be a whole coiner in 2030. There's 21 million Bitcoin. There's about 272,000 sats per person on the planet right now. Um, so, you know, that's not very many. Um, it's not even 0.1 Bitcoin. So, for, I don't know, man. For anyone new, by the way, uh, Andrew asked, sorry, what is the definition of a whole coiner? Is it somebody with at least a, one whole BTC? And yes, you're right. You get bonus points, which mm -hmm. don't count right <laughs> Cardis right now in the YouTube chat mentioned that there's 700, 730,000 addresses with at least one Bitcoin, but I imagine many people own multiple addresses, and so there are certainly not 730,000 whole coiners right now. Um, yep. I would expect that with time, the distribution, Bitcoin will get distributed more and more and more. Um, so right now, maybe we have, you know, 20,000 hundred thousand whole coiners um yeah. but it also depends I, on how many boating accidents there are do we count someone <laughs> who's a former whole coiner or or do we not i don't know <laughs> that's a good point but i, I sort of expect it's going to head towards about a million and um once bitcoin gets distributed sort of stay around there um, yep in the long term yeah i don't know i think uh, a million whole coiners would be quite a few uh, in the long run. So it's just going to get harder and harder to stack a whole Bitcoin. And, you know, if, if we're, if MicroStrategy and Paul Tudor Jones and, you know, the rest of this bullish news that we're on uh, now at the, you know, other macro investors, Raul Powell, you know, getting, getting long in Bitcoin, irresponsibly long, mm -hmm. as we heard him in, in the SLP ad. Yeah. You know, this cycle, it's going to be a lot harder to stack a whole Bitcoin. So, um, you know, these, these times we're down at 10,121 right now, um, man, that's a lot of sats, uh, for, you know, hundred bucks, 200 bucks. You can get a lot of sats, stack a lot of sats. I think the 272,000 sats per person on the planet, I think you can buy for about 20 bucks right now, like 22, 23 bucks, which is crazy to think about. So anything on top of your $22 worth of sats, is you know over the average amount of sats that would be available for every person on the planet so yeah um yeah so buy 28 dollars of bitcoin and you'll be slightly wealthier than the average person in 30 years <laughs> there you go <laughs> that's actually i do kind of i do love the ten thousand dollar price level because it's so easy for me to think in sats you know like i just i i opened up fold the other day and i for some reason, my eyes went to the dollar amount, and just by look, looking at the dollar amount, I was like, "Oh, Bitcoin's probably around ten thousand." Um, mm -hmm. But it ain't gonna last. <laughs> when did Reed. you first hear oh, about sorry. Bitcoin, guys, guys and gals? We got a question, or just guys? We got no gals today. Yeah, good question. Um, I first heard about it in twenty fourteen in twenty fourteen bubble or twenty thirteen bubble. Um, didn't pay any attention. I was still in university at the time, and uh, everything everyone was talking about blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. Um, and I, meanwhile, was sort of finishing my thesis 
and then uh, spent about four or five years in the woods. <laughs> totally missed the 2017 bubble and uh, came out of the woods and, and started learning about it again in 2018. <laughs> uh, I'll go next, I guess. I, when did I learn about it? I heard about it really early on, probably around 2011 or so, so but I didn't pay attention and I didn't really... I started paying attention a little bit in 2013 and then I kind of forgot. And then like most people, 2017 came around and I, I couldn't ignore it again and then got bit by this, this nasty Bitcoin bug. And, uh, and here I, here I am. Wait, yeah. What's similar that? to Sorry. what's up. What's yours. I mean, yeah. What's yours. I, I don't know if I know the, all the details. Yeah. Found Coinbase and Bitcoin in 2014. So I got, I went on Coinbase, tried to buy some Bitcoin and had trouble connecting my bank. And, you know, as we all, well, a lot of us know, Coinbase support, notoriously bad. Um, just didn't hear from them for like weeks and just gave up. I didn't really have, you know, I didn't really know what it was or have any sort of conviction at all. So um, I did follow a couple of Bitcoiners on Twitter and would, you know, kind of see things every once in a while. And then it caught my eye again in early 2017 when it went over a thousand and, uh, you know, went through 2017. Um, shit coining, you know, um, not really knowing what was going on. And by the end of 2017, I was a full blown Bitcoin maximalist and started the citizen Bitcoin podcast in like early 2018. Uh, so it took me about, you know, nine months probably to get to the full blown status. I've been Bitcoin maxi for two and a half years now. Yeah. I got, I got lucky. I, I got through my shit coining phase in about three months. <laughs> Yes. See, Reed is, Reed is an example of this new this new class that's coming in and going to take advantage of all of the amazing uh, educational content that's out there now and just come up yeah. to speed a lot quicker. And we're hearing we're hearing cases about that like a lot. Um, yeah. We're doing these uh, live meetups. Well, they're private meetups, though. Sorry, I guess yeah, they are live, but they're private, so they're not broadcast or anything. Um, and on Fridays, we just started uh, last Friday, Corey and I both hosted one and they are about eight people, including us. And we just had a great time just talking Bitcoin, telling our stories. And there was a woman in there that basically got up to speed uh, and skipped all of the shit coining uh, in three weeks and bought in at Swan. And she's, you know, just into the Bitcoin community now on Twitter and, and uh, skipped everything. So three weeks, it was impressive ramp up. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to do at Swan. So that's, that's an amazing story. All right. So I was going to say read uh, earlier. Yeah. It went to big bit block boom, man. That's a mouthful. That's kind of a tongue twister, isn't it? Um, so tell us, you know, tell, give us a little summary about what you saw there, what happened, uh, the reception for Swan uh, down there, whatever else. Yeah. So it was my first, my first Bitcoin conference ever, um, and it was it was an enormous amount of fun and and really cool to connect with people in person that I talked a lot with on Twitter and emailed with, um, and so. Um, I mean, most of the time, most of the conference was just spent casually hanging out, networking, talking with people, um, and sort of sharing bullish vibes. It was unbelievably, unbelievably bullish. <laughs> um, I can't speak for all Bitcoin conferences, but but for whatever reason, it seemed like only the, the most bullish and, and some of the most educated people uh, showed up. Um, so it seemed like about 80% of the people that were there knew a lot. Um, and we're Bitcoin maximalists. And uh, and of those people, it was really, really refreshing and, and um, inspiring to talk to them and, and have them be so supportive of, of what we're doing at Swan. Like I was blown away by how many people I, I would mention. Oh yeah, I, you know, I work at Swan. And they say, oh, great, I love you guys. I've already got a, already got a plan with you. Um, and so in, in a lot of ways it was, you know, 20% of the people I met, you know, I was pitching Swan to, um, and then 80% already were already on board with us. <laughs> yeah. It's a good weekend. I went last year and man, I, I was feeling the FOMO. We had so much, so much fun. Did, did uh, Jimmy auction off his hat again? No, no, he did not auction off his hat. It was a rabbit hole recap that was live. Um, and Tone Vase, <laughs> Tone Vase spent about like four grand on a cutting board 
um, that Matt O'Dell auctioned off for BTC Pay Server. <laughs> I like that. We've uh, we've got a couple of good questions in here, and I think people can learn some some stuff from uh, this one. Are you guys one? I don't think we're famous. BTCers, I wouldn't call us that, but are you not afraid for your safety in the future in terms of, you know, OPSEC and things like that? Um, I'll answer that for me personally. I mean, it's always a worry, but, you know, are you worried that someone's going to rob you of, of your dollars? You know, like we're entering this new Bitcoin age and I think not that $5 wrench attacks are over, but, you know, as long as you have good OPSEC and, and you're smart, you know, you, you're, you'll be okay, you know? Um, and the other thing is, I think for people like us, we've just realized that you know it's more important to to spread the Bitcoin, the good word about Bitcoin, than than it is to uh, you know just be uh, be a silent Bitcoiner, which is fine too. But uh, you know it's our passion, so I don't know if either of you have something to say about that. Um, there was one other question too that I thought was pretty great. Yeah, this, this is actually something that I have thought a fair amount about. Because uh, right now, I, I personally feel safe. Um, but in going into the future, um, who knows what the world will look like in five or 10 years. And, and I very much am sort of keeping my ear to the ground um, and paying attention to sort of dominant narratives um, and, and whether there are other Bitcoiners that are being targeted. Um, and yeah, so, so currently feel safe, but but going forward in the future, recognize that I may need to, you know, up my OPSEC, not have, not have my, uh, my coworkers dox my location, for instance. <laughs> um, I mean, Womack sounds like a made up name anyway, man. Like, you know, you, at least you're not like me with your real name out there, Brecky Von Bitcoin. Like that's, that's <laughs> terrible. Um, Brady, I don't know if you wanted to touch on that. If not, we've got a cool yeah. document. Oh, yeah. This is a great question. I um, definitely, you know, worry about this and have worried about it. Matt O'Dell talks about this a lot. You know, he's obviously very, um, you know, vocal about OPSEC. And he talks about how he, you know, he came out kind of slowly over time, but did it because he felt compelled to, you know, talk about this, you know, revolution that we're living through and, and share it. And I think we, you know, really need people to be public uh, about this and, and, you know, uh, be the kind of face of Bitcoin and, and help teach people about what's going on and make it, um, you know, something that's not sort of, you know, dark and, and uh, anonymous, you know, everywhere. So it's sort of legitimizes it uh, for, you know, a large sector of the populace. And so, yeah, it's a concern for sure. Uh, but at the same time, I think, you know, I think you can use like multi-sig, especially jurisdictional multi-sig in different, you know, uh, jurisdictions, like meaning different countries have your keys in different countries. Um, and that will, you know, that will help. Yeah, that will help arbitrage against that kind of arbitrage will help against, you know, a, a 6102 type order where the government, you know, uh, commands basically or demands that you uh, give up your Bitcoin and your addresses. And if you're KYC, which most people are, that would be possible. So, you know, you get a letter in the mail and say like, hey, you got to give us the keys to all your addresses. But if you have half your keys in another country, then that doesn't work. But more commonly, right, just to kind of uh, put off the what's the proverbial $5 wrench attack uh, where someone would come up to you and just demand your private keys or access to your Bitcoin. You should have a multi-sig, which you can set up very easily with Unchained Capital or Casa. And you put one of your hardware wallets, you know, let's say like in a bank vault and another hardware wallet in, in a different bank vault, like a completely different bank or bank branch. And then you have uh, a protection because if somebody comes up to you and, and demands your Bitcoin, you literally cannot do anything about it. You cannot give them any Bitcoin unless they, you know, abduct you and take you to two different bank uh, branches to get it, which is very unlikely. So um, that is, I, I, I've joked about in the past that I want to get a yard sign that says protected by uh, distributed multi-sig and just put it right by my door. <laughs> so I love just, that. don't even mess. Don't even mess. Bitcoiners, like, you know, you hear about the $5 wrench attack. Well, when I learned about that, I went to the hardware store and I bought a $15 wrench, which is much bigger. So, you know, protect yourself. <laughs> Um, one, one thing I'd add to this also is, you know, like 
uh, one of our founders, Corey, talks about the you know this intrans intransigent minority and 10 million Bitcoiners. You know, if we reach that point, you know, there's going to be so many people who have Bitcoin, politicians, kids who have Bitcoin. You know, like it's it's going to be different than it was in the early days where it's just a lot of whales who have tons of Bitcoin and they're super at risk. You know, it's not you don't just have Bitcoin in one wallet; you have it in multiple wallets, in multi sig, in, in a cold card, and you have a dummy cold card just for the so if someone were to steal it, you know, it's fine. You know. There's lots of ways to protect yourselves, and it's just important that you're thinking about it. Mm -hmm. No, I uh, think we, we have, have a question. Do you see a question from uh, from Periscope about wallets recommendations? Wallet recommendations. Yes. Pop that one up. Yeah. All right. Here's a good one. Uh, so I going back to what I was just talking about. Multi sig is the most secure wallet you can have. So Casa and Unchained Capital have uh, consumer grade multi-sig solutions on the market. Uh, Casa is keys.casa, K-E-Y-S.casa, and unchainedcapital.com. Uh, I think it might be unchained-capital.com. And yeah, so you can just set up an account there and you will be able to set up a uh, multi-sig. Multi-sig is you have three keys to access your wallet and you need two out of three of those to be able to send Bitcoin from your wallet uh, somewhere else. So this uh, allows you a, a lot, gives you a lot of security uh, against, you know, like I was just talking about uh, physical attack and also against, you know, losing your single key. So if you lost one of those three keys, you'd still be able to send your Bitcoin around. So um, that is a very secure way and definitely a way that I recommend, a route I recommend you go. It also, Multisig also protects you in case somebody just stumbles upon one of your keys or or even if they stumble upon two of your keys uh, with the two of three Multisig, it would be almost impossible uh, for them to figure out that those keys have fun stored without more information. And so that that's another attack vector it protects you from is, is sort of negligence or or somebody finding one of your keys. Hundred yeah. percent. Someone just asked. Also, um, would you put a hundred percent of funds in a multi-sig wallet, or divide a hundred percent of the funds among various multi-sig wallets? Um, I, I feel like I see a lot of people asking questions like this, and I and you know it really depends on your risk profile. And keep in mind, none of us here are experts on this, and that's kind of the point: is you need to figure out what what makes sense for you. You know, like do you keep all of your money in one bank, or do you keep some under your mattress? You know, I don't know what you do, and I don't know what makes sense for where you live, and you know how risky it is. But you know, you need to take all those things into account and figure out what how to minimize your risk as much as possible. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. I personally, I mean, it also depends on the amount of Bitcoin you have, right? So I think the more Bitcoin you you own, the more, uh, you know, I think security you need and you want to distribute that as much as possible among different wallets. So I think multi, a multiple uh, multi-sig, you know, is warranted, you know, once you get, you know, over a certain level, like it's a comfort level thing. So, um, you know, certainly having multiple multi-sig addresses or wallets, I mean, is definitely more secure. Uh, so it's just up to you how you how secure you feel uh, about where your Bitcoin is. Um, so yeah, I think dividing up is is a good idea. I as much as possible. I respect. <laughs> I totally respect those things that that you just said, Brady. I personally um, would put sort of. Try to try to have the most simple setup that you can for the most amount of your Bitcoin, um, so that you don't have sixty keys stored in sixty different locations, and you're trying to keep track of all your multi sigs. Um, mm -hmm. So, personally, I would, you know, if, as soon as you get above a few thousand dollars, or or maybe a couple percent of your net worth, um, put try and find one good multi sig setup and put the majority of your Bitcoin into that and then distribute the keys and do a really good job with protecting that one multi-sig. And then maybe you have five or 10% of your Bitcoin that's just stored on a hardware wallet um, or 1% that's just stored on your phone or something. Um, that would sort of be my strategy. But you know, I also also respect if you wanna split, split your Bitcoin into two equal halves and get two multi-sig strategies. So we've got a very important question, although we're gonna have a very biased <laughs> answer. Uh, the question is, Exchanges would you recommend to buy and why? Uh, I personally recommend 
on Bitcoin.com uh, because it's the best out there and it's amazing and the team is amazing and we put out great content and there's a million other reasons. Uh, Brady, uh, question. Do we have a, uh, a referral link that we can give everyone so they can get $10 of free Bitcoin if they go to sign up right now? Yeah, swanbitcoin.com slash satoshi, S-A-T-O-S-H-I. Uh, sign up there. And what's awesome about Swan is that we, you know, make it super simple for you to accumulate Bitcoin in the best way possible, which has been proven uh, to be true over time. Uh, it's called dollar cost averaging, just slowly and regularly accumulate Bitcoin, like you would contribute to your 401k uh, every month or every week or whatever. So with, with Swan, you can set up a weekly plan. We're rolling out daily buys very, very soon. And you can sign up to join that group at swanbitcoin.com slash daily buys. That's happening pretty soon. You'll get an email from us when we launch daily buys and you'll be able to be one of the very first to help test out the daily buys for us. Uh, so yeah, I mean, think about buying a bit of Bitcoin every single day, you, you know, average out dollar cost average out. So you average out your dollar price of your Bitcoin over time. So if Bitcoin spends a lot of time, you know, in the $10,000 range, $8,000 range before it, you know, shoots up like it did in the last cycle, uh, where we were over 10,000 for only three weeks. Um, then your dollar cost average during the last cycle is probably going to be somewhere around six or seven thousand dollars if you were, you know, buying all through 2017. Um, so that's a great way to accumulate Bitcoin. It's safe. You don't have to worry about timing the market in this 24/7, 365 day market. Only professional traders, you know, over over a long period of time, do well in this crazy market. So just buying a little bit every, you know, at a time, and you'll be surprised at how fast it all adds up. So SwanBitcoin.com/satoshi start your auto stacking plan heck yeah uh man you get these questions are freaking great okay so uh one this is not a question it's just daily buys yes i agree um here's a good one i think this one's for reed i have swan can we get our private keys once we've accumulated absolutely uh you can get your private keys before you accumulate it actually. Uh, Swan helps you buy Bitcoin and we store it for you. But your private keys, uh, you'll get from another wallet provider. And you can get that before you even open a Swan account. Many people who are new to Bitcoin, though, first start buying Bitcoin through Swan and then learn about self-custody, learn about private keys, either download a wallet or purchase a hardware wallet, get private keys from those, and then start moving their funds into Swan. Or sorry, moving funds into into their own into their own wallet. Yeah, I think he had another really good question as, as well. Um, Patrick did from YouTube. Um, there we go. Yeah, I mind because of you, Preston Pitch. Are there any hidden withdrawal fees other than the annual fee? No, there are not. Currently, we have free Bitcoin withdrawals, um, so you can accumulate. Uh, as much as you want. Uh, and then when you go to withdraw that, it's totally free for you. Essentially, our, our back end covers this minor fee of the, the transaction fee um, for each withdrawal. Exactly. Um, you know, I answered this in the chat, but I think it's important enough that we should touch on here. Um, so it's kind of just a general best practices type of deal. Uh, do you also get nervous if you send a large amount of Bitcoin with a potential typo in the address? How could you solve for this? Um, so this is the way I handle this. One, I never type out addresses ever, and you never should either. Um, but copy and pasting can also have its issues if, for example, you know, wherever you're saving that address, maybe someone had changed it to their address. So you know, the way that I solve this is with uh, what's called a test transaction or a scout transaction. Um, basically, if you're going to be sending amount of Bitcoin that you would be upset if you lost, send a much smaller amount first. Make sure it gets to that address, and once it's there, then you can send the rest of it. Um, I think that's that's best practice as long as, as far as I know. I don't know if either of you have uh, something mm -hmm. else you'd want to share with there. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, if you're sending a large amount that you're going to be nervous about sending try do a small amount first and you know once that small amount hits your wallet you'll feel a lot better about sending the large amount uh, i've definitely done this in the past i think over time you get you know more used to sending bitcoin um, so you may not feel as uncomfortable about it with larger amounts um, so yeah i think definitely at the beginning though do test transactions first with small amounts 100 percent. another 
Another thing to know is that nearly all wallets have a checksum, which means if you uh, copy paste it in and then you accidentally like forget the first character or accidentally forget the last character, the wallet's not gonna let you send money to that, to that address. Um, and so, yeah, just make sure you're always copy pasting. Um, know if you screw up the copy paste, the wallet won't let you send it. And then the other thing that to pay attention to a lot actually is that if, if you have a really compromised computer or a compromised phone, there is malware that will change addresses when you copy paste it over. Um, this comes up very occasionally, but it's important once you copy paste, just double check that the address still matches the address from you got, that, that you got it from on your hardware device or on your phone. Yeah, um, and a good trick, good trick at that is, uh, a good trick there or suggestion there, I think, is look especially at the first like five characters and the last five characters because I think the most common thing when you're copying and pasting is accidentally hitting like backspace or something and trimming off a character off the uh, off the end or something like that. So if your first five characters and the second five characters, maybe five in the middle, uh, are good to go on a copy paste, then you know you don't have to like necessarily go character by character. Yes, you do, Brady. <laughs> you know, if you want to, go for it. But uh, that, that's the way I do it. I check the first and last, you know, set of characters and then kind of just check a chunk in the middle and then I'm comfortable. Exactly. And uh, the beauty of Swan, if you're setting up auto withdrawals, is that uh, once you make sure the address is good the first time, you don't have to check it again. And Brecky, right. we have an improvement to auto withdrawals launching soon. Our good friend Gigi, who you might know, the author of 21 Lessons, uh, joined the team a few weeks ago, and his first project was to roll out XPubs. And XPubs are basically uh, a way to generate a bunch of addresses for your wallet. So you give an XPub to us, and we'll generate a bunch of addresses and store them and we'll delete your XPub uh, for privacy and security reasons. But then we have like a thousand addresses to send to you. So if you're withdrawing every week, we have a thousand weeks worth of addresses, uh, and every week we'll just auto, you know, rotate an, a new address, which is a Bitcoin best practice for privacy reasons. Reusing addresses is not recommended, um, but uh, yes, yeah, so we're rolling that out uh, very soon. Uh, Gigi and our designer UI UX guy Yorn, who's also fantastic, uh, are working on the kind of final touches of XPubs. So. We will be educating about what XPubs are and how to get your XPub and how to add it to Swan. Uh, and yeah, looking forward to getting, We I, I should know, we have the vast majority of our users auto withdrawing, which is exactly what we wanted to see. So now we kind of want to move people, having the vast majority of people using XPubs for their auto withdrawals. And if you're not comfortable with auto withdrawing to a wallet just yet, or you don't even have a hardware wallet, uh, we've got tons of stuff on our website about where to get started and you can hit up the Swan account or us or anybody. And, you know, somebody was asking this morning about, you know, what's the first hardware wallet I should get? And we were already hopping in and helping them. So if we don't know an answer, we'll make sure we get you one. Uh, we want everybody to get up to speed on Bitcoin. So I think there was questions? a question. There was a question about, yeah, BTC minded. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, introducing BTC to kids. It's a Periscope question. Um, yeah. So, okay. So I have, I have kids and um, I have introduced Bitcoin to them. We've used um, the Bitcoin rabbi's book called Bitcoin Money, a tale of, I think a tale of Bitsville it's called as the subtitle Bitcoin Money. It's a great uh, kid's book. It talks about why our money is broken and why you might want to have Bitcoin instead of dollars. Uh, it talks about inflation and stuff in a really like approachable way. And I, I find it's actually a great book to give to adults too, because it's, you know, 15 pages and it does goes through things pretty well. Uh, and so we've read that book several times and my son in particular loves it. And for chores uh we give you know an allowance every week for them to handle some responsibilities and we pay them out in dollars or satoshis they can they can choose uh and the, the satoshis are for saving uh for spending so that's like a savings thing so usually they kind of do half and half so they can you know buy something and then they put their savings in satoshis they love it uh use blockstream green wallet uh, blockstream green is actually a multi-sig uh by default wallet as well so that's a cool one to check out and start with on multi-sig blockstream green and um, you can set up multiple wallets uh, very easily in there. So I have a wallet for each of my kids and just move sats from my personal, my Blockstream Green wallet over to theirs. 
um, you know, whatever amount they choose. So uh, they are stacking sats and they have, you know, a good understanding of why <laughs> they're stacking sats. And, you know, the first thing I uh, thing I really emphasize, of course, is number go up. So I say like, you know, this Bitcoin could be worth this in 10 years, you know, and so getting these Satoshis now could go from like being worth like $5 to being worth X, you know, or X or X, you can kind of give several samples of like how much it could be. And so that's very convincing, of course, to kids just as it is to adults. And uh, I like I like most Bitcoiners uh, want to have kids, want to have a lot of kids, um, don't have any yet. <laughs> Defer to Brady for <laughs> recommendations. <laughs> All right, we have a product meeting in like five minutes, guys. <laughs> so, uh, Breck, I think you're on mute. We should. Uh, one last question then to yeah. uh, to close out, which is probably the most important question. Uh, who has the best beard, Brady, Brecky, or Reed? <laughs> I asked this question. It did not come from the audience. Uh, and you don't have to answer it, folks. But uh, think about it for next time. <laughs> My vote's for you, Brecky. Uh, I don't know. Brady's got the nice stash. He's got the nice little part in between the mustache there, but we well defined. So. Uh, I don't know, man. These are three pretty good beards. Yeah. Somebody, somebody earlier asked if, uh, if a beard was a requirement to join the Bitcoin cult. Uh, and I, I wrote in the chat that it's not required, but encouraged. But, uh, you know, you do you. Beards are an option. <laughs> this is a lot of fun, everyone. And there were a lot of great questions. So I think we need to be doing this some more is what that means. So we'll continue to do this. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, on YouTube if you're not already and turn on those notifications so you can uh, get a notification when we go live. Um, and we'll just keep doing these and kind of see how they go and feel them out. Uh, so really appreciate you guys participating today and uh, great turnout. It was awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Reed, final word. <laughs> Stack sats. I was two, but we'll take it. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have All a right. good one. Thanks, guys.